maybe Dan, you could talk a little bit about um, TDF versus TAF. Sure. Uh, so tenofovir disoproxyl fumarate versus tenofovir alafenamide. Again, because um, uh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, but someone right, comes right. in on a TDF <clears throat> regimen, is that the right thing? And, and that may be something that primary care providers or people that do HIV as part of their job might need to know. Sure, so, so tenofovir is, is the drug, but tenofovir is poorly absorbed, and so it has to be formulated as a prodrug, and uh, TDF, or the disoproxyl fumarate version, uh, was the version that was available. Uh, and and that, the way that drug worked was that when the drug was absorbed, the, the prodrug got um, cleaved so that a lot tenofovir circulated in the plasma, and that's what got into the cells. Uh, so you needed relatively high levels of tenofovir in the blood to get enough into the cell. Um, this newer form, or TAF, the alafenamide formulation, is also a prodrug, but it doesn't get cleaved when it goes across the intestine. It gets cleaved when it actually enters the cell. And so you can give much lower doses of TAF and achieve much higher concentrations of tenofovir in the lymphocytes and the uh, at other the cells target. at the target where you really want it. And, and so you, we've really gone from giving 300 milligrams of TDF to uh, 25 milligrams of more, in, depending on the formulation of uh, uh, of TAF, and you, yet you get six times higher levels of, of the active drug in, in the cell, and that's remarkable. Now, the reason this is potentially important clinically is that although TDF was uh, quite well tolerated overall, it did have some risk of tubular injury. The uh, magnitude of that risk and whether it was cumulative has been hotly debated and not yet resolved. And it's also pretty clear that when you start somebody on a TDF regimen, uh, the patients uh, had a measurable and notable uh, decline in bone, bone mineral density. density, which would then stabilize. And the magnitude of that loss was about the same as, as what happens in women when they go through menopause. So not a trivial right. decline uh, in bone mineral density. Uh, with TAF, that decline in BMD is much lower, and if you switch someone from TDF to TAF, you see a rise in bone mineral density, and you also see improvement in the markers of tubular injury. So what's missing here is we don't have hard clinical endpoints. There's no study that's shown that somebody staying on TDF is at greater risk of developing clinically significant renal insufficiency or fracture. Right. Uh, and, uh, and, but TAF is clearly less likely to predisposed to those, and if uh, all other things being equal, I think it's hard to rationalize why you would uh, at least newly prescribe TDF as opposed to, to TAF. Whether everybody needs to be switched or not, I guess, is, is a bigger sure. question. And, and I guess it's the all things being equal thing. Right now, the, the, the cost is approximately similar. That, that could change, right, Eric? Um, yeah, I mean, it's possible. And then there's some creative new regimens that may be coming out as single tablet regimens with TDF. In, in 3TC, a, a new right. NNRTI, Draverine, right. the FDA is looking at. So right. in theory, they could have two drugs that are generic mm. with the one new active drug as a single tablet regimen. And that, we don't know how it'll be priced, but price could become relevant. All right, so that, that, may, that may occur. Certainly, TDF in someone who's young and healthy with normal uh, renal function we certainly were fine with it for quite some time. Right, and it's important to point out, and, and this is actually a critical point uh, w with respect to our PrEP discussion, that the only currently approved yeah, right, formulation yeah. of tenofovir for PrEP, prep. is the TDF, TDF FTC formulation. There are ongoing clinical trials to see whether the TAF FTC formulation is as effective, but for the time being, people should only be prescribing the TDF formulation uh, of uh, tenofovir for PrEP. Right. In the other sort of scenario where TAF may not be as ideal, it's not yet recommended for pregnancy because Pregnant, yeah. mm -hmm. yeah, we don't absolutely. have any Good data. Point. And the interaction with rifamycin sure. right. is complicated, where with most of our drugs, we can use rifabutin mm -hmm. as an alternative to rifampin. We can't really do that yeah, right now. Yeah. Right, but you can double the dose. Uh, there were yeah. data presented uh, from uh, one of the pharmacology workshops that if you double the dose of TAF, you can overcome the, the rifampin effect, but that's not yet an official yeah. recommendation. Yeah, 